In this video, I'm going to go over the new, what I would class as divine spells. So new spells for clerics and druids and paladins. Rangers would be in here, except they don't have any new spells. I'm going to go through them alphabetically, so I will be switching between classes. And so I'm going to start with Animate Dead. And I've got Shadowheart here. Animate Dead, what does it do? Animate a corpse to create an undead servant while not in combat. Doesn't mean your servant can't join combat, just you have to do it outside of combat. So we've got Skeleton and Zombie. Start with a Skeleton. The skeleton has a bow, makeshift bow, and no melee weapon, so it's primarily a ranged attacker. It does 3 to 8 damage, which is not much to write home about. I'm a class of 10, which for an undead is not that bad, really, and has the downside of, um, I guess, positive side of skeletons as being with having vulnerability to bludgeoning and immunity to poison types of damage. We can choose zombie, which I feel is better. Here's the zombie. It's got more hit points, which you might think is good, but its armor class is even lower at 8, so it's going to easily be hit by most things. However, it has an arm strike doing 5 to 15 damage. 2d6 plus 3 is quite a step up compared to the skeleton. And if you hit a target with your bare fist, you possibly infect it with the crawling gnaw. So if the affected entity dies before the infection wears off, it will temporarily rise again as a newborn zombie. What's a newborn zombie? Zombies born from the crawling gnaw cannot last. They take one necrotic damage each turn and only follow the zombie that infected them. But if you go around and manage to hit quite a few enemies and then kill them before the time's up, within a single combat, you can create a small little army if things work out in your favor. Obviously, they may not. Now, before I start combat, I want to show you that most NPCs are quite rightfully very wary of the zombie. So I'll get the zombie to start the action. It doesn't have the hide action, so we've just got to attack. Hopefully nothing runs away too much. Right, let's see. Where does it go? It's quite low down. Its dexterity isn't great. I managed to get Brem down to one hit point. Not on purpose. Let's... We've got a 75% chance. Let's do that. And there we are, we get a newborn zombie, it only has 10 hit points, so it will last 10 rounds absolutely maximum. It has joined the combat, although it is seemingly hostile, we'll, we'll see. So let's try this unarmed strike. We have a new zombie, and they, here it is. And it's going to follow the parent zombie, as it were, around. It's taking damage. One nice thing I didn't mention earlier is that this doesn't require concentration. And even if you unprepare the spell, the zombie is still there. So where are we going to put this? I think at the very beginning, this is a critical hit. It's absolutely amazing being able to have extra allies in a fight because they can take more damage and deal more damage and it just makes things easier. Something I'll be taking into account for all of the spells, we only have two level three spell slots. And so when we cast this, we've got to compare this, every spell, every level three spell at least, to the other level three spells available. And is this the best choice of a level 3 spell? One very nice thing also, as I kind of already mentioned about animate dead, is you can animate your dead and then replace it with another spell. For that reason, I think this is an obvious critical hit. I wouldn't use the skeleton so much, I would probably stick with the zombies most of the time. Next up is Beacon of Hope, another cleric spell. So we're sticking here with Shadowheart. Beacon of Hope, bolster your allies with hope and vitality. They regain the maximum hit points available, uh, possible when healed and gain advantage on wisdom saving throws and death saving throws. So it's a 30 foot range, explode radius 30 feet, okay, and concentration in a level 3 spell slot and one of your prepared spells. So we can cast Beacon of Hope. So everyone here has now got Beacon of Hope, right? Advantage of Wisdom saving throws, death saving throws, and regains maximum hit points as possible when healed. But to show you the healing, it says 5 to 8 for healing words. And it does 8. Perhaps we have some potion of healing, 4 to 10. Which gets 10. And so yeah, it does what it says on the tin. And we've even got a greater potion of healing. Let's just throw that to show that it's possible. And 20. So that bit works out quite nicely. Now, I have a few problems with the spell. Firstly, concentration, and there are some much better spells to be using for concentration. Secondly, because we can't change spells in combat, you have to keep this prepared ahead of time. If we could change spells in combat, I'm not saying or arguing that we should be able to, but if we could, then this would be better because then you could switch to it when you're in trouble. However, this means you have to use up one of your cleric's prepared spell slots, assuming that you're going to have to be able to going to have to use it. Uh, ideally, you don't want to have to use it. I do get that things go wrong. That's all perfectly understandable. And most of the time when I'm healing in combat, 
It's to get people back up from when they're down, which it can help actually to have the maximum hit points. But kind of my point here is that no matter how many hit points you have, you do the same amount of damage. And it could be okay to heal outside of combat maybe, but it's a level three spell slot. I mean, obviously here I'm, I'm in a combat where I don't really need it. So yeah, I'm not overly impressed because now I can't concentrate on anything else. I have to be concentrating on Beacon of Hope. The amount of healing we do, even with maximum healing, isn't that great. Maybe if there was a life cleric, it would help a little bit more. But the paladin healing is all set amounts. So yeah, Beacon of Hope, Beacon of Hope. I'm going to leave it in C. It's not a critical miss, because if you are in a situation where you think you might, where you kind of need it and you have it, it would be really good. But the fact is it uses up one of your valuable spell slots, uses up one of the slots to prepare spells and its concentration it's just not what i want out of a spell a level three spell anyway next up is bestow curse yet another cleric spell and i'm in the same combat as just now so let's have a look at this bestow curse curse a creature with your touch all right oh, look at this we get loads of different choices so we're gonna have to look at these one by one bestow curse dread curse a creature with your touch it fills with dread possibly skipping its turn based on a wisdom saving throw I feel like that's pretty good they fail a wisdom saving throw, they miss their turn, and that is massive. Especially at higher and higher levels where enemies can be doing lots and lots of damage. But let's look at all the other choices. We've got additional damage. Your your attacks and spells deal an additional 1d8 necrotic damage to the target. That's a level 3 spell for what almost what Hunter's Mark and Hex do. They do 1d6. So I'm not so impressed with that particular choice. Attack disadvantage. Because a creature, it suffers disadvantage on attack rolls against you. That's you in particular, not other creatures. Charisma disadvantage, so the rest of them focus on one of the abilities and give them disadvantage on charisma checks and saving throws. That's quite important. The only main downside to this is that it requires concentration. I'm going to try Dread. 65% chance. That's I usually want better, but I kind of make this better. I've got Tentative Smash, which gives disadvantage on wisdom saving throws, I believe, if it works. So let's get him over here. This might not work. Worth trying. Oh, Bane. Critical hit. <laughs> right, thank you, Paladin. Let's try this again. So, Stove Curse. Dread. 75%. That's a bit better because of Bane. Oh, they passed their saving throw. Which is sad. The level 3 spell slot gone. And this is a bit of a problem with Baldur's Gate 3 is that spells with attack rolls are significantly better because there's so many ways to increase your bonuses for attack rolls. We've got uh, height. For example, we have plus one weapons, we can hide, and other things. But I did my best. Right, they have, they've got Bane. Now, where would I put Bestow Curse? I'm going to leave it at A, because we have some good options. Yeah, I'm just, just going over that in my head. I'm going to put it in A, because we've got all of this versatility. You could focus on something particular if you want. And the main one I'm looking for here is Dread. If it skips its turn, that's basically it doing nothing. It's out of combat, and you can just wail on it. If you can find a way to decrease Wisdom saving throws, such as Concussion or Bane, this would be even more powerful. We do need to keep in mind it does require Concentration and one of your valuable level 3 spell slots. Next up is Branding Smite, which is a level 2 spell. Now, thankfully, I've got this Tiefling here, this Zariel Tiefling, who gets it as a racial spell, which is kind of nice, but I can show you it's the same here. Branding Smite, your weapon gleams with astral radiance as you strike and possibly marks your target with light preventing it from turning invisible so if it hits it does an extra 2d6 radiant damage and stops them from turning invisible and makes them shed light which helps in the underdark because not everyone has dark vision such as mazzy here so i've already attacked once I'm going to use this and also interestingly we can use it ranged which the other smites we can't it does require concentration let's give it a go and we can use our usual Divine Smite on top of that. I'm not going to. Yeah. So now this, this hook horror is giving off some light. Not that we can actually really see it. Kind of prove it. There's no obscure disadvantage here for the Halfling. I'm going to go in for the kill. There we are. I've just realized also I haven't put Divine Smite into here. That's not really a spell, is it? Now, anyway, this is a Paladin only spell. Where am I going to put this? Considering it requires a level 2 spell slot. We don't have very many. And requires one of the spells known and concentration struggling between b and c in the underdark it's probably b because it provides light if it's not in the underdark probably c i'm gonna put it in b because if you use it carefully and you have a good idea which enemies can turn invisible then this is probably a good spell to be trying to use next up we come to cool lightning our first druid level three spell it's a new spell so what does it do 3d10 lightning damage cool down lightning to hit all targets within range each turn you can Cool down lightning again without expending a spell slot for 10 turns. Requires concentration and a level 3 spell slot. So let's see this in action. So you can see the area of effect on the ground. Maybe if I go to this, it's easy to see. 
I can see the white outline. Bigger than Moonbeam, which is kind of what I'm going to be comparing it to. So let's actually set this off. Right, I accidentally put that in the wrong place. So there, all surprised. And so it's her next turn. And so we can pull lightning one more time. I could be a bit more careful this time. And before I do that, I've got somebody here with the rain dancer. I'm going to create some water. I didn't get seen before it happens. Good, so they're now wet. And also, just to show you whether this works or not, can I take a potion of haste, a potion of speed? So we're going to cool lightning down. We can't get all three of them, it seems. Let's go on these two. They have to make a dexterity saving throw, and they are vulnerable to this damage. Even though they passed, because they're vulnerable, they take double damage. And because I'm hasted, a bit like with Moonbeam, I can make it come down again. This time I'm a bit worried about this. No flesh. Nora, I would advise you use it on groups of enemies rather than individual targets, if you can. The area of effect isn't too small. Oh, look at that. We did enough damage. Now, these aren't the hardest enemies now when we're at level 5. But even enemies that aren't level 4 or below, there's still a very good amount of damage. And as you move around, you can choose where you put down the cool lightning. Any of you who watched my live stream or one of my live streams with this using house and using this know just how gleeful I am when I use this. I am obviously biased, perhaps I've got some preferences, but I think this is an absolute critical hit. It's kind of an upgraded version of Moonbeam. It's not exactly the same because Moonbeam can uh, cause damage on two turns and all. So there are benefits to Moonbeam, but this does more damage in a wider area of effect. And you can make enemies vulnerable with water. Now, as I go through, do let me know if you think things should change. I'm not infallible, I'm not perfect. I do have my own preferences and biases. The next spell is Compelled Duel, which is a Paladin spell. What does it do? It's a level 1 spell, not level 3. Use a divine command to compel an enemy to attack you. The target gains disadvantage on attack rolls against anyone but you. Lasts for 3 turns and a bonus action level 1 spell slot and concentration required. Let's try this. That didn't work. I've got a few other paladins ready. Waiting. Unfortunately, upcasting it doesn't do anything extra. There we are. Compelled duel. No. Not working, and apparently we're still concentrating on it. Better make my next move. Bonus action, compelled duel. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work at all. So I'm going to try again. This isn't the this particular spell's fault. It is just the nature of saving throws. Alright, at last it's worked. So let's stick these other paladins up in its face. Bane will help. Let's just wait down here. So let's see what the enemy does. Just ignores us and takes that disadvantage anyway. What do I think of the spell? I'm not really particularly impressed with the spell. As a paladin, if I'm going to be concentrating, I'd much rather you be concentrating on Bless or maybe one of the other spells that are coming up later. It only lasts three turns. It might be okay against a individual boss, I suppose, but yeah, this is quite close to critical miss for me because it doesn't even force the enemy, completely force the enemy to come to you. It just gives them disadvantage on attacks against other people. Just the fact that we have a limited number of spell slots as a paladin him. Concentration is best used elsewhere and I don't feel the spell is really that impactful. Next up is Daylight, a level 3 spell that clerics and I think druids get. So we've got two variants of it, uh, but before we look at the variants, just the general description of the spell. Enchant an item to shine like the sun or summon a sphere of sunlight that, that dispels all darkness around it. So the sphere that dispels all darkness lasts for 100 turns. Or we can enchant an item or weapon which basically does the same. So if you want the light to follow you around, just cast this on a person. And it can be anybody, it could be on your, your bedroll if you want. So I'm using it here in the camp because I want to show you something. So let's, let's just enchant... Actually no, let's get the halfling, let's get Mazzy over here because she doesn't have dark vision. Enchant item. So that's, that's really bright now. And it doesn't require concentration. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to go to sleep. And we'll currently find that on the next day, we still have daylight going as if no turns have passed. If you're going to use it like this, this is obviously going to make the tier a little bit higher. Right. So what good is it? I think it's quite good. If you need it, this is great. If you have dark vision, this isn't as useful. It's not completely useless. Because dark vision does have a range. Most races have a range of dark vision lower than the range of this light. So it doesn't require concentration. It goes on an item. I could probably drop said item. Yeah. And then it lights up. So if you don't want to have it on a weapon, you could still put it on any item you want. 
and the light moves around with that item. So where's it gonna go? I'm gonna put it in B. If you want a massive amount of light, then this is something you can use, but obviously it uses a level three spell slot, which is definitely why it's not going any higher, but it provides so much light and you can walk around with it and you can use it before your rest. That might get changed. That's just what it's like currently at the early stages of patch nine. Now, as I go through this, I do just want to point out, I'm not going to include any domain or oath spells that aren't on the spell lists for these classes so for example the oath of devotion here a sanctuary but i'm not going to include that because it doesn't appear in any other spell list right now anyway divine favor is next so it requires a bonus action also there is currently a bug with this so your prayer empowers you with divine radiance your weapon attacks deal an additional 1d4 radiant damage if you hit requires concentration and a bonus action so i'd much rather be concentrating on this than compelled duel for example uh well yeah the problem is it says 10 turns here but in actuality it's only three turns so i'm gonna hide for at least the first attack there we are we got four damage done there this wasn't the ideal time to use it because i'm not going to use up all three turns but especially with paladins having at level five extra attack that could be an additional 2d4 damage per turn which isn't to be sniffed at especially if you get to attack for all three turns. So where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it at B on the premise that it only lasts three turns. If it lasted 10, like it says in the spell description, I'd probably put it up here. Uh, but as it stands, putting it down here, because if it lasted 10 turns, you could easily do more damage with it than you could, would do with a Divine Smite. Divine Smite is 2d8 damage. This, over the course of 10 turns, can turn into a lot more damage. Obviously requires concentration though, which I think is what will never go into critical hurt, even if it lasts 10 turns. The next spell is Feign Death, which both clerics and druids get. Once again, the level 3 spell. Puts an ally into a protective magical coma deep enough to imitate death. The ally becomes resistant, not immune, to all damage except psychic damage. And disease and poison no longer have any effect. It says it lasts 10 turns. Let's see. Let's try and put Mazzy Fentav into this condition. So she is feigning death. Well, that's not her turn, apparently. Just skip turns. And so... I, I don't really like this spell because Mazzy can't do anything. And if someone's so close to death that they require this, they're only resistant to damage. They'll still die. They'll get knocked out. And it requires a level three spell slot. Takes your ally out of combat. Considering this is only... I don't think this is going to make any difference outside of combat in the game. I, I don't really see the point in this because if Mazzy's only got one or two hit points left, she may as well just deal out as much damage as possible rather than waiting to be killed and not attacked. I, I don't know. Maybe I've missed the point of the spell, but, but level three spell slot when I can be doing much better things instead, such as animate dead and there's a druid cool lightning. Why am I going to use level 3 spell slot to take one of my allies out of combat? And potentially they're going to go down anyway and I have to heal them afterwards. I'd rather just have my allies keep going until they go down and heal them up afterwards. If you guys know a better use of feign death than me, please let me know. But I just do not recommend this at all. Next up is Glyph of Warding. This is a cleric spell. And it was a spell, but it's on the cleric list as well. So inscribe a circle of arcane glyphs on the ground that trigger a magical effect when stepped on by an enemy. And we've got all these different effects. So we can essentially create some sort of detonation of 5d8 acids, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage, which by themselves are a sort of decent amount of damage. Or glyph of warding detonation. The glyph emits a gust of wind that pushes everyone back. Or I think almost the most powerful one in one sense, glyph of warding sleep. Glyph emits a soothing magic that puts everyone within range to sleep. They do have to make a dexterity saving throw though, so they're not necessarily going to be put to sleep. So I'm going to stick it up there. I'm going to do Glyph of Warding Sleep. Stick it up there. So when that goes off, anyone within that range is going to have to make a dexterity saving throw or, or basically fall to sleep. Let's shove him in there. Off it goes. So Philro failed to save, but he's a he's a, an elf that so doesn't go to sleep. And the Hookora passed their save. Boo. Obviously, that didn't look so good. However, that isn't the only thing Glyph of Warning can do. For the ones that do damage, the targets still take half damage, even if they pass. But had I put something else there, obviously, I would have been hit by it as well. Perhaps it would have been better to have put the Glyph of Warding over here instead. Now, after reloading, there is actually a bit of a bug with Animate Dead and Glyph of Warding. It says the spell isn't prepared, but soon, let's just say I click on Prayer of Healing, and all of a sudden, Prayer of Healing goes in. Oh, and there's Glyph of Warding. Uh, there's a bit of a bug with the prepared spells right now. Okay, so I'm going to try again. I'm going to try and be a bit brave. I've already got Mazzy Fentav here. He's already hypnotized anyway. Tavadin's fine because she's a half-elf. Now, the really powerful thing about this, which I wanted to show off, 
is the sleep spell. Next, a maximum of 24 hit points at level 1, 32 at level 2, and I haven't checked at level 3. I imagine something like 40 hit points. If an enemy can be put to sleep because their race is not immune to it, they will be put to sleep no matter how many hit points they have if they fail their dexterity saving throw, which is what makes the sleep one very powerful. Plus the damaged ones do loads of damage with the potion of speed. Let's just try Thunder, sorry, Mazzy, Fentav, and the others. Just gonna do it. Boom. And uh, decent amounts of damage. Obviously, the more people you can get inside the area of effect, the better. So, Glyph of Warding, I'm going to have another critical hit here because it's utility and damage. And it's an area of effect. Doesn't require concentration, but you can only, only have one Glyph at a time. You know, fair enough. Otherwise, you just whack them down, go to sleep, put another one down, and you should be able to win every fight very easily. Uh, so, I'm not upset that it's only one Glyph active at a time. Next up is Magic Weapon. This is only available to Paladins from this list. I do believe wizards get it as well. Here it is, magic weapon. Level 2 transmutation spell. Infuse a weapon with arcane energy. The weapon becomes magical, receiving a plus 1 bonus to attack rolls and damage rolls. Until long rest, concentration required, and an action required. You should really use this outside of combat. Um, since she goes next, I'm actually going to put it on her. Parabello. And so now we see we've got weapon enchantment, plus 1. We get plus 1 bonus to attack and damage. Yes. And this does also affect magic weapons, so as I've done a few times before, let's do this. Got one level 2 spell slot left. I'm going to use it, not on the hook, I'm use it on herself. Just to show to you, this is a battle axe plus 1, and there's an extra plus 1 bonus. So we do actually stack this plus 1 bonus with weapons that are already magical. The main downside to this is its concentration, and for paladins it's one of two level 2 spell slots. I'm struggling between A and B. Uh, the main downside to it is concentration, so you can lose concentration. You're going to leave it in B. If it wasn't concentration, it would probably be too powerful. It would be a critical hit. Uh, I don't think there's any in between here. And for Paladins especially, one of two level 2 spell slots. Maybe for Wizard it could be an A or something. But because of concentration and the level that it is, I'm going to leave it at B tier. The next spell is Mass Healing Word, which it does what it says on the tin as such. Call out Words of Restoration to heal up to six creatures, which is the same amount of healing as Healing Word. So it requires a bonus action like Healing Word and a level three spell slot. So we can see the radius here is quite large. It's just a very large radius. It doesn't affect undead or constructs. So if you have any zombies or skeletons in your party, this won't affect them. They are immune to healing as such. I would suggest if you're going to be using this, do give the Eric the items that improve healing. I don't have the boots of aid and comfort with me. So we heal everyone in range, including the caster, which is kind of nice. I mean, if we've got these items, we do buff everyone as well for one turn. If I had Hell Riders Pride, it would give all allies resistance to bludgeoning, or basically give them Blade Ward. Uh, there's not much more to say about it, or to show you, because it affects your allies, it's healing. And going between B and C, because you have to keep this ready and prepared, which uses up one of your prepared spell slots. You can't, as I said, you can't just switch this in and out during combat. It requires one of your two level three spell slots. And it's just not much healing. Bonus to it is it is a bonus action. I leave it as C just because the low amount of healing. If everyone's on the floor, I mean, you can use healing word and then throw a potion and you get two people up. It's not six people. We're rarely going to have six creatures in our party though, unless you've got someone who's summoning things. I'd say most of the time, we're not going to use up all six uses of it. Um, and just because at the moment in early access, we only have two level three spell slots. I keep saying this. I think the level 3 spell slots are a bit too valuable to keep Mass Healing Word ready, just in case you need it. A bit like with the Beacon of Hope here, because the healing it does just isn't very much. If it did boosted healing, definitely want it to be higher, put it higher. But, you know, it's mediocre at best. With all the right items, you know, I could argue B tier, I suppose, but, you know, throwing a potion next to two people standing next to each other has the same effect. <laughs> if not, does more healing than this. So I'm going to leave it at C tier. Plant growth is next, which is a druid only spell. And so, here we are. Make weeds burst from the ground and smother the area. Creatures moving through the weeds have the movement speed quartered. Not half, like difficult terrain, quartered. Lasts for 10 turns, no concentration required. It's back here with the gnolls. So, if you've got the right situation, this can actually be quite good. Look, yeah. No yeah, surprise. Do you know what? I love the look of this spell actually as well. Unfortunately, it would affect us as well, which is the main downside. Interestingly, it says 30 turns remaining, but the spell here says 10 turns. Uh, so it does more turns than advertised. Now, my question is can this be set on fire? 
because lots of surfaces like this can be set on fire. And this, it can, the fire doesn't spread, but fire does get rid of the surface, which is a bit disappointing. Now, it doesn't require concentration. Let's, oh, they're all surprised. We'll just have to wait for this bit. So look at that, the Flynn got barely anywhere. Obviously ranged attackers don't really care and they'll stop, even though they dashed and they have to stop. So where am I gonna put it? Plant growth. If you've got a situation like this and you haven't set it on fire, it can be very powerful. You have to be careful using it because it does affect your party as well. I think this is gonna be another B tier because we can get rid of it. Enemies could get rid of it if they're clever enough with something like fire. I'm just gonna check out water here. Which also gets rid of it. Oh, it's almost down to C tier. I'm going to leave it at B because it doesn't require concentration. And it affects quite a large area. And so if you're clever with it, you can use it well. Sorry, I said plant growth was for druids only. I did forget. Bards can take it as well. But they are not divine casters. Next up is protection from energy. Touch a creature to grant it resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage. Concentration required. Level 3 spell slot. This is bloody useless. But level 3 spell slot and concentration. If we just... Pick up, look at this, elixir of potion res oh, potion, poison resistance, elixir of fire resistance. I just, but level 3 spell slot and early access, I'm not even going to bother showing this in a combat. I mean, what? Action for energy, thunder! Resistor. Fine, they have resistance. But now she doesn't. At least things Didn't require concentration, I might be a bit kinder to it, but useless. Critical miss, just, uh, no. I mean, lots of classes get this. I've got bloody cool lightning. How can you com compete cool lightning with, how can texture from energy compete with cool lightning? It just can't. I do want to point out something that I did read about. I just want to show you with druids in particular with moonbeam is there's a current bug at the making of this video where level three moonbeam doesn't require concentration. <laughs> Uh, so this is a very good competitor to Cool Lightning, considering it does, at level 3, 3d10 damage also. Keep that in mind. Uh, but once this bug is fixed, Cool Lightning still stays at a critical hit. Our next spell is Remove Curse. Touch a creature or object to remove all curses affecting it. What are curses in this game? A small group of conditions that hinder or harm you during combat. Basically, at the moment, this is the hard counter to Bestow Curse, which is also level 3 spell slot. I'm not really impressed with this because I haven't seen many enemies use Bestow Curse themselves so far. And if it's only curses, I mean, I'm going off slightly without any full information here. If curses only happen during combat, then I would, and it comes from Bestow Curse, I'd rather just break concentration rather than use level three spell slot. If there are curses outside of combat, then this is great because then you can prepare the spell outside of combat, use it, and then just switch to something else and take a long rest or whatever. I'm gonna leave it in C tier just on the off chance since I haven't really got complete information on this and all the curses right now, maybe this is worth it. But if it's only during combat, it means we have to use up one of our prepared spell slots and one of our two level three spells. And curses only seem to be coming from Bestow Curse. We can break concentration rather than use it. If there isn't any more to it than that, I'd put it in Critical Miss. But if there are other curses that come our way, then I would definitely put this, leave this at C tier or higher. In fact, if there are other curses that happen, I'd probably put it even higher because we can just switch it in and out and it doesn't really matter. But I'm leaving it at C. Please do let me know if you know more information than me about this. I just haven't come across curses so far. Next is Revivify. To revive a companion, they return to life with one hit point. Uses a level 3 spell slot. No concentration, no cost, which is different to Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Take two. And there we are, they come back up. And you can use this out of combat. You could probably go back to camp, take a long rest, come back and resurrect them. So where does it cut? I think A is fine because it saves you money. It saves you having to pay withers and or using a resurrection scroll. Searing Smite. Another Smite here. So this is for Paladins. Also, Zarya Tieflings get it at level 3. So what does it do? It's a level 1 spell and it requires concentration if it hits. So your weapon flares with white hot intensity as you attack, marking your target with Searing Smite. What does Searing Smite do? There's 1d6 fire damage every turn, so if they make a constitution saving throw, then they will stop taking this damage. It takes an action and bonus action to hit. And you can smite on top of it, let's just do it for the sake of it. And so we'll just let this Hukara take its turn. The one thing I don't like about the smites, 
apart from Divine Smite, of course, is that it requires a bonus action, which means I can't hide and get advantage on my attacks or shove or jump. Ah, the Hook Horror succeeded on its constitution saving throw. I mean, Searing Smite spell does a bit of extra damage when it hits 1d6 extra damage. If it's your racial spell, it's not so bad because it's, I, I see those almost as free spells. They don't use spell slots. But as a spell slot for a paladin, I'd much rather just try and hit and then use my divine smite like this although i did only do four damage there which is a bit disappointing and it requires concentration as a racial spell i'd probably leave it at a because it's just a source of extra free damage i'm not a fan of this because lots of enemies have a decent constitution saving throw i'm gonna leave it at c and compared to the other smites we can have it's it's okay i suppose maybe i could argue put it up at b maybe i've missed something perhaps you could link it with um, of the items that increase fire damage in which case it definitely goes up as it is just your average paladin spell i'd probably want to be concentrating on something else and use up my level one spell slot to what ended up being just an extra 1d6 damage instead of 2d8 would be for just the normal divine smite the last druid spell here is sleet storm this is a level three spell again called forth a storm of sleet that douses fires creates a nice surface and disrupts the concentration of spell casters for 10 turns requires concentration 60 foot range with 30 foot radius which is massive I can actually cover most of these gnolls that are at least nearby so it doesn't provide any sort of cover or obs obscurity it's hype and now it's all ice uh, strangely the enemies aren't wet not what i would expect and again i'm just going to see what happens with surfaces let's just create any old surface let's let's just throw some poison which creates the poison surface there. But Sleet Storm overwrites it once again. And it, the only real downside to this is it well, downside, but as with lots of good druid, lots of the good druid spells, this does require concentration. So you have to say, do I want to cast this or cool lightning or moonbeam or something else? It would be good against casters who are concentrating. Because if you fall prone, you do lose concentration automatically and it is difficult to rain so it takes longer to get through it as well and again i've created it here forcing the en these enemies to go around and i could stop concentrating on it at any time and run back down if i wanted to not that i really would but just know something i could do however if i do want to use cool lightning lose concentration uh, but the ice surface is still there for a little bit, which is a bit of a benefit. So I think this is a solid B tier spell. If it did a tiny bit of damage or maybe added some fog inside there, like the equivalent to fog cloud on the inside, perhaps I'd make it higher. But it is competing against some very good spells. But it's not a bad choice. This third from last spell is an absolute classic. Spirit Guardians. This is for clerics. Spirit Guardians. Call forth spirits to protect the area around you. Nearby enemies take 3d8 radiant or necrotic damage and the movement speed is halved. On the save, targets still take half of the damage. I'd probably go with radiant damage since some enemies are resistant to necrotic damage and it doesn't make much of a difference. So that's actually going to start combat first. Best thing about it is it only affects enemies. So let's go. Spirit Guardians. Radiant damage. Bam! There's nine damage. Uh, they don't have many hit points down here. And uh, I'm not really quite close enough to any other enemies. Fortunately, I'm not going to be able to reach anyone else this turn. I jump down here. Looks like I can. And bam! 11 damage. If I could walk that tiny bit further, I'd be able to get him as well. Let's just see what they do. It does require concentration. It's a miss, which is nice. I'm hoping on my next turn I can do a bit more damage. And if enemies end their turn with inside it, they also take damage. So, this dude here... Uh, he just walked straight into it and took more damage. <laughs> At level 5, these guys are just pathetically easy to kill, to be honest. They've got no chance. Right, back to... Oh, there we are. Did another 7 damage. Let's... Do you know what? You can just dash. Like, screw it. Who needs to do any more actions? Let's just... Oh! Get you. And just to show you, right, he's had Spirit Guardians. Did 7 damage. It doesn't do any more damage a second time, right? But he would have his movement speed halved. So if you had a cleric with a very high movement speed, which is possible, or in fact, because we get extra movement speed here, I uh, don't know if I'm going to have enough. Oh, I can dash as well. <laughs> All right. Let's try and head upstairs. Try and get this guy. And all for the cast of a single spell. And like with all area of effect abilities, the more enemies you have around, the better this becomes. Bam, got him. <laughs> you can just imagine if you left the goblin camp until level five, between fireball and this, you'll be mowing down goblins like there's no tomorrow. 
Uh, uh, this is easily critical. Even without fighting goblins, it's still really good because you have the movement speed and you're doing this damage when, on your turn and maybe on their turn. There's nothing not to like. And every other concentration spell for clerics has to compete against this, which is why Beacon of Hope is down so low. Bestow Curse is okay if you're fighting against the boss. Cliff of Warding doesn't require concentration, you see. And so, you know, am I going to use Spirit Guardians or Bless? Probably going to be using Spirit Guardians. The penultimate spell is Thunderous Smite, a level 1 Paladin spell. Your weapon rings with thunder as you strike, pushing your target 10 feet away and possibly knocking it prone. It does 2d6 extra damage when it hits. So let's try this out. It uses a action and bonus action. Uh, the pass is saving throw, but we can smite on top of it, just like so. So this does also require a bonus action like the other smites. Uh, oh, they've passed their saving throw. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. It does almost the same amount of damage as Divine Smite, but has the potential added benefit of knocking things back. So I'm going to leave it at A, because if you don't hit, you don't waste the spell slot. And it's not really that far off the damage of Divine Smite, but it's got some extra utility. And lastly, that leaves Wrathful Smite. So Wrathful Smite does an extra 1d6 damage. Your weapon absorbs your wrath as you strike, possibly frightening your target, then make a wisdom saving throw. As with all the other smites, it requires a bonus action. This one does require concentration, not that all smites do, but most of them do. Wrath Vaults. And they keep passing their saving throws, which is a bit sad. But we can... Oh, we can't try again because it requires a bonus action. Uh, Wrathful Smite. Mm, I'm going to leave it on the same tier as Searing Smite because of the concentration requirement. And it only does 1d6 damage. Frightened is okay, but I think there are other better ways. It only lasts two turns as well. It's not like a long-term thing. Maybe it could be B tier, but again, if it uses the bonus action and concentration, I'd probably rather be using concentration on something else. So do let me know if I make any errors, if I've made any errors here, any details I've gotten wrong, so everyone can see that and we can all discuss it. But overall, I've definitely got these spells towards the top. I'm going to be using much more often than the ones towards the bottom. The ones in the middle are good in a particular situation, or maybe do require concentration. The ones at the top, you, you can't argue with these four, I don't think. These are the clear, clear winners that I imagine lots of people will be using a lot. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you made it this far, please consider subscribing, and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one.